I want to welcome back our viewers to uh, Conversations with John. This is a series where I bring in leaders from across the denomination and just have some conversation. And today I'm very pleased to have with us the president of Elmhurst College, Troy Van Aken. Troy, why don't you uh, introduce yourself and say a couple words about who you are and what you do? Yeah. Well, as you said, my name is Troy Van Aken, and I have the privilege of being the president at Elmhurst College you know, a proud UCC institution in the western suburbs of Chicago. And, um, you know, like all of us, I'm uh, working through this coronavirus pandemic on multiple levels. You know, first and foremost, you worry about your family and those loved ones that you have near you. And um, I have two children that are in a medical school or or heading into medical school. And so um, I'm pleased to say that they're safe, my wife's safe. But then, you know, when you look at an institution that has 3,500 students, 750 employees, you worry about the impact that it has on your organization. And of course, first and foremost, you worry about the safety yeah. of your constituents. I'm pleased to report that um, to date, nobody associated with Elmhurst College has tested positive. Now, we don't know whether that means that there's uh, been right. anybody that has been impacted. But by and large, you know, we feel that our decision to um, close close the campus to all but essential personnel and then a few international students and students that felt it was better for them to stay on campus, you know, made sense because as I talked to other college presidents, you know, they're having reported cases um, in their constituency that, you know, could have led to them being one of these super spreader sites, which a college campus would be very fertile ground for. Sure. Um, So walk me through, uh, when did you all waken up to what was happening? What conversations did you have? What decisions did you make? And how's that impacted your student body, your faculty, your employees? Right. So, um, you know, Elmhurst College uh, started to put together a coronavirus task force uh, in early March. And at that okay. point in time, it was just, what are we going to do to be prepared for if this happens to, you know, um, take a foothold in this country? I think as, an, as, an, as a nation, we were wondering at that point, was this going to be like SARS? Was this going to be like some of the other uh, potential pandemics that um, existed? So we put that in place, and then it really came up on us quick. I remember our trustees were here, and they were here on a Thursday and a Friday. And I remember in the midst of that meeting, having to make the decision that we were going to go online fully uh, the next Monday. Now, at that point in time, we thought that it was only going to be for a week because we were one of these schools that had a later spring break. So we thought we would do a week of um, online instruction. Then we would have our spring break and maybe everybody would come back after spring break. Little did we know that some of the goodbyes that we were saying were goodbyes for, you know, well, we don't know how long at at this point. So we made that initial decision and then it wasn't very long, but what we had to extend it and, um, you know, eventually had to say that we were going to be online for the entire semester. Being online is certainly an adjustment. Um, Your faculty have to teach differently. Your students have to learn differently, engage differently. But put that aside for a second. You talked about 750 employees on campus. Uh, what's their status right now? Right. So um, what we have done is um, we have um, initially we made sure that everybody knew that their employment wasn't going to be impacted. What we've chosen to do is during the month of um, April, uh, all the administrators have agreed, and it was led by the cabinet volunteering this before we ask it of all employees, to take a one-week furlough. And um, what that will ultimately play out for will depend on the individual, but in many cases, it's just that they're going to take a week vacation during, you know, this, this month period of time. And we're still hopeful that we'll be able to return to, to normal at some point in time. I guess we don't know what the month of May will, will hold, right. um, but that was the action we did. And that's a little bit of a shared approach to this. Now, of course, our faculty, they're probably busier than they've ever been, and so they're not part of the furlough um, situation uh, because, you know, they need to give their uh, dedicated attention to our students. And they're doing a really good job of, um, in in very difficult circumstances, turning a very highly interpersonal uh, situation into something that can play out online. I'm sure you're very proud of what your faculty are doing and what your students are doing Mm -hmm. to adjust to this. Um, One of the questions that 
any campus, whether we're talking about colleges, universities, even high schools are thinking about once you roll into May, you're talking about end of the year, you're talking about graduations, you're mm -hmm. talking about life-changing moments that families look forward to for a long time. What's your decision making around that and, and how, how are you bearing the burden of having to make decisions about that? Right. Well, unfortunately, we, like most campuses, did have to make the decision that we will not have an in-person commencement on May 21st and 23rd. Okay. However, um, we were reluctant to do that. We really felt that we serve a lot of first-generation college students, individuals who, you know, yeah. that's an important point in, in not only their life, but the lives of their families and others who contributed well, to their sacrifice for years to make this possible for now. So we're still um, intending to have a commencement ceremony. When is now the answer? At one point in time, we thought that we might be able to do it um, on July 1st or thereabouts, which is the same time we're changing our name to Elmhurst University. Yeah. We've got another plan that says we could maybe do it in August, just as we're getting ready to start the fall semester. I guess, you know, if you have a crystal ball that would tell you <laughs> when that would be possible, but we're doing all sorts of different things. We're even toying with the idea of not having a virtual uh, commencement. And the reason we're not considering a virtual commencement is that we've surveyed our students. And they have replied back that they don't want a virtual commencement. So we might do some sort of a, um, a, a video recognition where we have everybody, you know, his name scrolling across the screen with a picture of them or, or something to be able to recognize them on the day that they, they've earned their degree. But I think we're holding out for an in-person commencement because there's just something about this place that's so interpersonal. Yeah. Um, we think that we need to, you know, try to have that commencement. Well, my son being a graduate and his wife being a graduate and uh, my wife and I being parents of, of a student who graduated from there, we saw how intimate the campus was. And I fully understand how important that will be to, to all of you. Um, what are some signs of hope that you're seeing through this and experiencing as you and your faculty, your student body and all of your employees make the adjustments that you've had to had to make? Yeah, so I mean, one, just the, the amazing efforts that everybody from the support staff, I'm talking like our people in uh, information technology, our librarians and others, to really rally around and support our students. Our counselors are doing um, phone call counseling, our health services, you know, the whole campus is really trying to be there for our students as best one can in a virtual setting. The other thing I saw is that we sort of have seen beyond ourselves. So we've donated uh, 20 or 30,000 uh, gloves, some personal protection equipment. There's stories if you want to go to our website where, you know, our faculty members are using 3D printers to uh, make masks for the, the hospital. We've even made it so that our residence halls are available uh, if need be for healthcare workers who um, mm. feel that they can't go home because they may have been exposed by the, the virus. And so, I think when this is all said and done, and I don't think Elmhurst will be unique in this regard, but I think we're going to be very proud of all the stories of individuals who did whatever they could to try to make a difference in a, in a very um, fast moving and difficult situation. Uh, you referenced your website, the stories that are on there. What is uh, your, your web address? Do you know that? www.elmhurst.edu. Thank you for All right. giving me yeah. a chance to plug so that. <laughs> our, our viewers, uh, if you want to check that out, uh, let me just say at the close here, Troy, uh, Elmhurst has been a long partner within and of the United Church of Christ. Uh, I want our viewers to know that any of you that attended General Synod last year and remember the keynote address that we had, Elmer's College uh, helped pay for and sponsor that keynote address. We're grateful to you. You've made some important decisions. And as you said earlier, you are coronavirus free on the campus. No student, no faculty, no worker has contracted that. Um, I'm sure that's largely due to hard decisions that you and your trustees and your, your uh, senior leaders had to make early on. I'm sure not sure you were making the right decision, but it turns out they were. I want to thank you for all of that and for your time with us today and anything you want to say before we uh, close out. No, I just encourage everybody to stay safe and, and do have faith. I am one of the optimists that believe that we will get through this as a nation, as a society. Um, but we just need to be pragmatic in the short term 
as we try to navigate uh, this, this situation. All right. Thanks thank you. Me. And I want to thank our viewers for tuning in once again to Conversations with John R. and uh, for uh, our, our guest today, Troy Van Aken, president at Elmhurst College, soon to be Elmhurst University. Troy, thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a good day.